good morning friends today we will see that how we can visualize our first program which we have written in the previous video uh, we will visualize it into spark context web ui and that by default runs on localhost 4040 so as we wrote in the previous program that we created a java spark context and then we created an array list of five integers and we tried to parallelize it and create an rdd out of it and reduce it uh, and found like uh, the maximum minimum and sum but to visualize all this in the spark uh, spark context web ui we need to keep the main program running so once we run this program and when it's exit this main method it completes all all its work and inside this main block it will exit right so once this exit after that we cannot actually visualize uh, in the ui so we need to have like hold this program running so for that i will do one thing that i will create a trick here is that i will wait for us for from the scanner i will uh, wait for the input so for this i will create a scanner so new scanner and wait for the input from keyboard the system.n okay and i will okay uh, all enter java.util scanner and then i'll do control alt v to give a variable name i'll just keep it as scanner and let me put it into a try with resources block so i will first mark it as final war and inside a try block okay and inside that i will wait for the scanner to get an input first now by doing so what i am doing is that unless i after all this has been printed we got the max min and sum after that the main program will still wait to, for the user to input anything otherwise it will keep on like uh, waiting here and keep on still in the loop so that and that that is the way i will start uh, launch the ui in the web browser and monitor this so let's see that what it means is that okay let me run it for a demo now as you see the program has been running because it's still on because it's for this block uh, that we have written it will wait for the user to input anything in the output so if i just put an enter so it only then it is closed so uh, so i can hold this program for uh, running by using this trick that it will keep on running and then we will open the web ui so let's try it again and then we will open the web, uh, the web context ui on local host port 4040 so let me run it again so our program is running and waiting for an input. Let's in the same time let's launch our Spark Web UI. So I'll copy this as localhost 4040. Open a new browser and then put it here and press enter. Okay, so we can see that our web UI is on now. And let's go through the details for each of the tabs. As we can see at the top level, we have got jobs, stages, storage environment and executors so let's look on each of these uh, tabs one by one now the first thing we see is that our app name is mark as spark first program the same would be present here as the name of this application ui as spark first program this is the first thing now let's go back to the to the jobs jobs page here which is by default so the scheduling mode that we see here is fifo that is first in first out because we are running on a local machine, the standalone cluster mode currently only supports a simple FIFO first in first out scheduler across applications. So this is what it means because we are running it locally. It's a standalone mode. And the completed jobs you can see is four. I'll, I'll get back to it. So the number of Spark jobs, right? We can see that number of jobs uh, are put here is like zero, one, two, three, four. Now the number of sparks or jobs that we wish is four is uh, is equal to the number of actions in the application. So these are all actions that we are uh, seeing here. Is count is an action, reduce. There are three reduce that we have called. So let's go back to the program and see. So here we can see that we first of all we count. We have this count method, which is an action, and that's why this uh, compresses of one job. Similarly, we have got three reduce. These are all actions. So that's why we have got three plus one, four actions, which are being shown here in the completed jobs section. 
Now let's look more into this all the other fields here in the completed jobs. We can see this is stages and it's showing that how many have succeeded and how many are total stages here. So we can see that it's one for each of them. It's one because each of these actions are an, a narrow transformations. These are not wide transformations. As we covered in our previous video, that narrow transformation is something which only happens for, uh, which only like act take actions on only one partition of the RDD. Wide transformations are across the various partitions spread across several nodes uh, in the, for the RDD. So as we know that this reduce and count, currently these are not uh, wide transformation. These are only narrow transformation. That's why the number of stages is only one. And it's also given that how much time it took for each of the action to perform. For example, here it's only given in seconds and milliseconds and the time as well. And how much uh, tasks were completed for each of For here also we can see that there's only one, uh, four tasks uh, for all the stages because we have got total four stages and all of them have only like one task and all of them succeeded. And besides that, okay, we also got this description. In description, if I just click here, so it will open this new tab where we, it will show a DAG visualization that how it was called and the completed stages here. And here again, if I click on this, it will show me a different page, which will show me the additional matrix. For example, I can see that how the paralyzed method was called and uh, how the RDD was created. And there are various other things which, which we can uh, which we can monitor here. So guys, let's revise what we have learned in this video. So we went to the job UI. We have got this jobs page tab. And here we see the, our Spark first program as the application UI because the same we have given here in our app name here, Spark program. That's why it was showing as Spark first program. And then we see that the scheduling mode is FIFO because we are running this in our local machine in the, and that's why by default it's always standalone mode and standalone mode always has got this first in first out scheduling, scheduling mode for all the applications across the nodes. And now we see the completed jobs and the event timeline. Event timeline, we see that when was the executor added? I mean, this is more about the timing that what exactly which time it was added the executors for executing our uh, jobs and our actions that we have taken. And it has it is showing me the number of jobs as four because there are four actions that we are taking count and three reduces. And that's why there are four jobs with the job IDs. And also some other details are given like submitted duration and how many stages are there because these are all narrow transformations that's why there's only one stage only with one task and it's also showing the bar that uh, that all the top, uh, tasks are succeeded so this was about the job in the next video we will see about stages which is the next tab